Greetings Vladingtons, welcome back to Valachia. We will head straight in to the fourth episode with The Moon Rises. Dracula never breathed a word of it, but many began to think that his time at the Ottoman court had stoked his hatred for his southern neighbor. For years, he had brooded over his brother, Radu, who had treacherously pledged himself to the Turks. Dracula also had his vows to the Order of the Dragon to consider. The Pope and the Hungarian region both desired war with the Turks. In the year 1462, Sultan Mehmet II renewed his efforts and sent a force of 18,000 into Valachia. Thinking that Dracula would be unable to mobilize his army quickly enough, the Sultan sought to take Valachia by storm with this small force. He was, of course, sadly mistaken. I had heard whispers of the Danube butchering, but never a first-hand account. Dracula's enduring ability to overcome the most fearsome force of his time mesmerized me. Dracula had a thirst for blood unlike any other, but he was fair. His sense of justice brought a change in all of us. Dracula taught us to use our strengths to our advantage. Terror speed and surprise became weapons more potent than our blades. Finish this Ottoman dog. Alright, we are in the game after yet another epic introduction. Just a note, I do believe Dracula had a high testosterone level. That's why he was both fair, but also had the capability of being brutal. A sense of justice and fairness and a high level of testosterone, or a healthy, decent level of testosterone, are interlinked. Now, that being said, we have the main objectives. Win the initial battle. Then I'm just going to read through the hints really quickly. But seize what prisoners you can. We will impale them all back at Targovishta. We must impale. One upset does not win a war, Vlad Sepesh. Ten times the number of men that you just faced advance as we speak. Prepare to meet your god. The border castles are the key to this region. We must defend them all from the Turkish onslaught. Indeed, again, I am. I don't know how I still can get uh, surprised by the epic graphics, but uh, I suppose good things is um, well good to repeat. I'm uh, spreading some positive vibes when I talk about how beautiful it looks. So we are Slavs again, and we have this magnificent castle. This might actually be the thumbnail of the video, something like that epic um, now let's see we have ah, we have some trade going on here as well and a monastery how nice uh, might as well start upgrading monks because I do believe that yes the Slavic monks are a bit tougher than other other monks are so basically Lord, the boyars and their peasants in the countryside will provide us with resources to fill our arms but they are a fickle lot perhaps it would be wise to seize what they have before they turn it over to the Turks uh -huh, so we can attack and convert the local villagers um, all right Aha, we're getting attacked now by the Turks. I suppose we can just withdraw into our castle here. So, I thought to tip my Pickelhaube to a British man, a Polish man, and a Romanian man. See, things go well when Europeans cooperate. 
I'm talking about the terror attack in London the other day. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't, but uh, yeah, the terrorist managed to kill a young guy, but was then attacked in turn by these three guys I just mentioned. One of those guys, the Polish guy, I do believe, armed himself with a narwhal tusk and went on the offensive. Very based. Based and red-pilled. Uh, definitely something I respect, and uh, I thought to talk a bit about this. Which I might do. The arms of the Sultan's vanguard shine like gold in the sun. Soon, they will add your silver to our coffers. Ottoman forces threaten your stronghold at Puyanari, my lord. Puyanari. Okay. Um. Yeah. I got a bit interrupted there, but I was going to say that I wanted to. Yeah. Talk a bit about those. Um, those people, uh, those guys, I uh, want to salute them. Uh, that sort of heroism and courage is something that you see every once in a while, but um, not all too common perhaps, especially in Western Europe and uh, of course in some other parts of the Western world where you have vilified masculinity for uh, such a long time. Um, whereas in Eastern Europe, uh, uh, Romania and Poland, for example, uh, you haven't had the propaganda for as long. So even though Romania and Poland were under communist rule, they weren't under liberalism at least. So uh, that means they still have, haven't had the attack on soul, the attack on gender roles as much as you've had in uh, the West. So it's no surprise for me when it's usually it's usually Poles who commit um, heroic acts. Uh, and my analysis is because they haven't been... Uh, they haven't vilified masculinity um, as much as we have in the West. So that's probably why you see... Um, and also, of course, in, in this case, Romania um, suits well since we are in, in Romania now with good old Vlad. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. If you want a uh, society where you have heroes such as this, then uh, you can't vilify masculinity. So something to keep in mind for all um, new males and feminists, etc. It's, um, it's good to have a culture of heroism. So basically what I will do is... Yes, I will talk about my training session before I utilize an edit. Did some good old deadlifts. Two sets, five repetitions at 210 kg. And then one set at four repetitions. I couldn't manage another five with a good form. So then it is better to... Um, to simply... Yeah, not do the... The extra rep if you feel you can't maintain a good form. So then I just did some barbell rows as well. Um, to get some more working, but yeah, a very short session managed the progression anyway in the deadlift because uh, the last session before that was only one set at five repetitions. So anyway, long story short, and uh, yeah, the important part is that I managed uh, the progression. Now my monk here will be shot by this Ottomans, see if we can survive. Ah, I think we can. These Janissaries uh, will pay for their insolence. We have been attacked here as well, but yeah, it sorted itself out, I suppose. Charge, brave men. The Order of the Dragon. And now I will get back to the monastery with this guy here as well. So I was originally supposed to make this video yesterday, but a certain princess of ultimate cuddles was um, very attention-seeking, and um, yeah, so I had to be a good father. 
But um, that's nice too. Ha. Huh. Maybe we need to protect these uh, farmers against the Ottoman expansion. So anyway, if you follow me on Telegram or Instagram, you saw that I was on a two years celebration in... Uh, Do you remember Radu Bey, your brother? The legions of Janissaries under his command alone outnumbered the peasant rabble that you call an army. Oh, that's not good. Uh, anyway, as I was going to say before he so rudely interrupted my line of thought, um... Was it a two years anniversary for the Free Sweden? The Free Sweden project and Svenska Hus, the House of Swedes. And that's where I will have the gym when the time comes. So that will be in uh, next year. I will start uh, the construction, uh, or I will oversee the construction of the gym. And then I will have, I will hold the training seminars, etc., there uh, next year. And I have, in uh, this year, held um, MMA seminars, so um, yeah, good times, good times indeed. So if you wanted an update on the, on the movement, I suppose, the pro-Swedish movement. So it's all about creating our own spaces, uh, having our own, yeah, our own places to be. Um, simple stuff. And on another note, here's their castle. Blasphemous. We had uh, the monk. Aha, he actually did return. How nice. And there we have another monk. I will train some more monks so we can convert the Ottoman forces. Okay, so it said in the hint to not attack this castle directly. So anyway, in regards to my training session, since it's Monday, it means Bronze Age Pervert posts his uh, podcast, his weekly podcast. I can definitely recommend you... Um, to listen to it, by the way, I've even signed up for a um, for a year um, premium subscription, so I get the whole show, and it's uh, money well invested. I can assure you. So I'm not only doing it because I want to support him; I do it because it is a good thing. Um, but he didn't post in time for me to hit the gym, so I had to listen to music in. Uh, in between sets. Otherwise, if he has posted, I uh, listen to his podcast in between sets. And then, of course, during the sets, I put on some um, heavy metal or similar things. Even the vast walls of Constantinople crumbled before the might of our bombards. Do you truly think that your measly fortifications will withstand the barrage? I do indeed. It's a sad and traumatic moment in European history, the fall of Constantinople. But something to keep in mind is that the Byzantine Empire had been on the decline for quite some time when it happened. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the Byzantine Empire at the height of its uh, its glory that got uh, defeated, but uh, it was basically. Yeah, Constantinople was still in the possession of the Byzantines, but the other than that, it uh, was quite hollowed out and, of course, a point of shame for the Latins, especially the Venetians, was the sack of Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade, if I'm not mistaken. I do think it was the Fourth Crusade where, um, yeah, well, the, the Western Crusaders sacked Constantinople. Um, highly inglorious, but um, such things happens. But now we are a 
few years at least later than the tragic day of, uh, of the fall of Const Constantinople and we can we can defend Valachia at least and uh, relive the legend of Vlad Dracula. So anyway, continuing on my discussion on masculinity and culture, etc. It's something quite refreshing if you look upon Polish culture. Now, of course, I'm not saying that all Polish guys are interested in masculine endeavors and uh, are completely shielded from uh, unmanly behaviors, etc. And I'm not saying that all Westerners are feminized, but I do know, at least in Sweden, there are a lot of men who view heroism, honor, uh, the pursuit of martial prowess, the pursuit the pursuit of strength, uh, they view it as outdated. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you talk about masculinity, if you talk about being strong and honorable and being heroic, they will sort of laugh at you and say, oh, how outdated you are. Uh, this, uh, this is medieval, what you're talking about. Uh, but then again, these guys aren't the ones who can protect their own women. So the last laugh is on them. And I do think that that sort of mentality is uh, less frequent. Less frequent in Eastern Europe rather than uh, Western Europe and Sweden especially. And that is also why I try to, um, well, get, get people to... Um, especially in Sweden, to be a bit more... to embrace their masculinity a bit more. Because it is needed. If you have uh, a society without men, it's um, it's not a good idea. So anyway, we have gotten some Hungarian true friends. Highly epic. We will ship them across. So many we can't even fit them, but... Uh, we can transport them and uh, ride them up here. Some glorious Hungarian cavalry. Go on, get in there, Laddingtons. We have to liberate this land. Okay, so now they're actually putting on uh, quite a bit of pressure here. We have to build some boyars, I think, and perhaps some onagers as well. They are uh, the good units. We can create some champions to deal with them too. Now, of course, I do have... Aha! Our villagers are being attacked. I cannot endorse this barbarism in the least. I have to ride out to the rescue. Attack the valiant elite boyars of the Order of the Dragon. So I've talked about the ironic guys or ironic culture. I'm and I'm not saying that you know what you can never joke, etc. But if you view everything as a joke, if someone says it's important with heroism and um, masculine values and virtues and someone transforms it into a joke that becomes a problem and that is what I mean with the ironic guys that they cannot take anything seriously and that is something I see more in the West rather than the East so um, yeah that is my analysis if you see a lot of if you see that Poles have a, on average in general they have a more healthy masculinity than a lot of Western And speaking of this, if we're talking about football hooligans, so in uh, the Euro Cup 2016, the British hooligans got absolutely wrecked by the Russian hooligans. It's because the Russian hooligans are more serious about being good at violence. And of course, then they will wreck the British guys who are out more for uh, 
doing drugs, drinking alcohol, having a good old time. And then you have the Russian guys being out to be as formidable as possible in team fighting, basically. So, um, that's also something to keep in mind. Um, how serious you take it. For the Russian guys, yeah, it's super serious. Now, of course, the British hooligan scene has been under quite strict regulations by the British state. And the British state is also a bit more overbearing than the Russian state. Back in the day, people used to believe that Russia was a totalitarian state. And I suppose in to a certain extent they might still be, but they are nowhere near as totalitarian as England or Great Britain. Great Britain takes the price, I would say, in terms of being totalitarian. Complete joke of a country in a lot of ways. Then of course I'm not saying that to slight any British guys who are listening because Sweden isn't much better either. We have a lot to work with, so I'm just being self-critical. I'm being self-critical as a, as a Scandinavian. So what I'm not saying is that Eastern Europe is uh, better than Western Europe. Um, of course Eastern Europe has plenty of problems, but you can make a quite easy analysis if you look at Eastern Europe. They have been more severely hit, economically speaking, because they were under communism. And Western Europe has been more morally hit because we have been under liberalism. So that can be said to, e to be a, um, well, a good difference, uh, an easy understandable difference. If you are under communism, your economy suffers. If you are under sort of extreme liberalism that we've had in the West, you, um, yeah, you will, it will take its toll on the population. Uh, so, again, that being said, I'm not completely saying that, you know, Eastern European culture is uh, so well preserved. They are also victims of modernity. And uh, I'm not saying that we haven't had economic problems in the West, but I'm just generalizing very heavily here. So, um, but I thought that could be a good way to describe it. But, uh, again... There are a lot of similarities and, uh, you know, if we're talking about such a thing as porn addiction, I'm sure it's equally bad in uh, Great Britain or in Sweden or in Poland. So you have a lot of similar things too. But uh, in terms of culture, I would say there is a difference that comes to the fore in, uh, in certain ways. So uh, simply what we can learn is that it is not a good idea to have a culture, a society which do not value masculine values, basically. So that was my rant for uh, this video. Now we'll just, um, yeah, continue to weather out the Ottoman storm here. I utilized a little edit there, so now we're closer to the Turkish withdrawal. So uh, we're gonna see what happens then uh, perhaps that would be the end of the mission and um, yeah then we have um, had a nice little time here in Valachia and um, yeah that was actually the end of it so um, let's look at the story unfortunately this was where my lord and I were separated the Turks Entered the castle courtyard of Poyanari with murder on their minds and ransacked the fortress that we had fought so hard to defend. Taking refuge in a secret tunnel, I watched Dracula's boat float down The stone bastions of Poyanari never caught flame, so I was spared. As if God was with us, an avalanche struck the departing Turkish army and blocked the route to the castle. Although this evidence of divine retribution stirred our foes, I figured it was caused by the enemy camp. I was not eased by the change in the mood of our host. 
The gulls of wolves and the bats filled the air as we feasted. It seemed that the old man was lost in ruminations of times long gone by. Absolutely epic, so I will leave it at that and in the next episode we will go to what I think at least is the final, The Night Falls. So um, yeah, good times, good times. Thank you for watching XOXO. Boo!